I never had an ego. I was never really jealous of anybody. I never really thought most of myself. But when I met Cuss and I started talking to Cuss, um, he made me believe that I was a god. There was nobody that could reach the core like Cuss could. No one could um, inspire me. Cuss would say this, do you hear this? Because Cuss had a really, um, he had this really um, megalomaniac ego. He said, you let me tell you something. You, 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 all the prophets, all the gods you ever know about, if they had a son, their son couldn't beat my fighter. Know why? Because he's my fighter. Cuss um, was an interesting guy. He had the concept of fear down to a science. And most of his fighting was mostly psychological. He believed um, physical, the physical actuality of boxing was only 10% when the mind was 90%. He always believed in improving yourself and strengthening your mind. He was a strong believer that um, your body, um, only purpose was to carry your brain. He believed um, fighting was um, your, your opponent's surrender, his total destruction. And he didn't think of it as, um, even though he said it was savage and ferociously, you had to do it in such a relaxed and calm state. A really scientific way of destroying. He enjoyed hurting the opponent. He wanted them to never have a chance to believe they could beat you. Everything was that um, I'm invincible, I'm a savage, I'm ferocious. I'm the smartest savage. A sophisticated animal, a smart animal. The lion and the fox, you know me, I could also, I could beat the vicious guys and I got smart the slicksters. So I was, um, I was pretty much didactic in that, that apartment. Mostly um, books about war, Claude von Klotzwitz. And this is why Cuss read all those books. Cuss was pretty much an intellect, but he was an intellectual and philosopher about war. And he thought fighting was a form of war. I wanted to make Cuss proud. That was my whole existence for fighting. I wanted to make him proud. If someone said something negative about me, he was an old man, he would attack them. He would do anything for me. Well, the peekaboo was a uh, really uh, cruel style of boxing. It basically kept both your hands up, and it basically you twist at your waist and you move, and you, you come forward, make the guy miss your counter punch. And he pretty much, he really discovered it from karate. He watched karate people do it. And just move, get to one position, and punch with everything you got with bad and mean and ferocious intention. I love war. I love the act of war. I love the um, I love the players in war. I love the philosophy of war. There's a quote in Machiavelli, the prince, and when they say, after you defeat after you defeat the king and you cut off his head, you be audacious and you say what you're going to do to the next ruler and the next um, prince that you're going to conquer, and that allows them to be intimidated. Yeah, this is the moment I knew I wanted to be a fighter. Watching two masters fight. After watching these guys, I knew. They were fighting, they fought 15 rounds and, they, and it was a war, but none of them had a mark on their face. But it was a hard fight, but nobody had a mark on their face. They were master technicians. He was a street fighter like me. He was crude and mean. Um, I never looked at Ali. Um, I respected Ali and I worshipped Ali. But he was, um, he was very tall and very handsome. I was very short and not so handsome. And he was very, um, I don't know, I mean, articulate. And I spoke with a lisp. And um, I, didn't re um, I didn't relate to two besides we were black. Ali was a middle class kid here. The mother and father that both worked. My mother and father was in um, the sex industry. So I, you know, and Roberta the grandmother was pretty much, you know I mean, out there as well. And so I related to that. And um, I didn't have to change. I didn't have to um, change my diction. I didn't have to learn how to talk um, polite. I didn't have to be nice. I didn't have to, I didn't have, um, have to have a proper linguistic skill. And so 
if he could be accepted and be worshipped that way, I thought I would be able to as well. He, after that fight, he, he, he pushed Lenny, went to some other guy, and he told him to suck his balls. You have to understand, I'm, 14, I'm only 14 years old when these guys fought. This is 1980, so I'm 14 years old, and I just thought that was the most remarkable person in the world. I was born with great perception. It came from my street life, from being locked up for stealing and um, facing unbelievable odds as a young kid. I had great perception. And once I watched um, these guys fight, I just knew it was a matter of time, but I knew uh, my time would soon come. Reggie Gross is a real tough guy. He's a spoiler. He beat a lot of undefeated fighters. And... um, Everybody thought he was going to go at least 10 rounds with me and give me a tough fight. I have to move my hand. I have to be very elusive. And I know um, I want to hurt him desperately. I want to dismantle him. Watch this. Watch my head. When this is over, everybody's going to know my name. And the people that I fight after him, oh, they're going to fear me. And um, that's pretty much um, how my reign consists of, of just fear. And on an occasion, some guys like him, who's a tough guy, they would try to fight back. And that would just um, allow me to excel at an extremely high level. I never wanted to be obscure. I was born in obscurity and I never wanted to deal with that again. I knew I would, um, I would obtain my goal before it existed. I knew that. I knew I would be champ of the world before I died. I knew I wasn't going to die before I became champ. I was just disappointed that I didn't kill them back then. Because that was just my main objective because I wanted to succeed so bad and I failed. And I just, um, the fear of not succeeding was, was worse than dying. So I just wanted to make sure they never got up. Our world was winning and beating people and looking spectacular doing it. You know, it wasn't about anything. Our whole life wasn't about making money. It wasn't about being rich. And nobody on the planet could beat us. That was everything. I, my whole life, he said, best fight in the world, best fight in the world. There's nobody on the planet that could beat me. I could beat anybody on the planet in a fair fight. And that's what I always believed. How many people in this planet? I said, what, around 5 billion people, 6 billion? I said, I could beat every one of them in a fair fight. I must be a descendant of the great warriors of old, all the gods of war, because I'm winning with the most simplest of these. How could these guys even dare fight me? I must be ordained by God. Dying is just as glorious as living when you really think about it, because you couldn't have a life if you didn't have death, and you couldn't have death without life. So how can death be less glorious than life? They're both intertwined with one another.